When selecting great high school teams, oftentimes many mention powerhouse programs such as Oak Hill, Montford Academy, or even Chino Hills. Although they are in fact great teams, they are often over-glamorized due to social media. However the greatest high school team of all time played in a time where there wasn't heavy media or Twitter like today. That team comes out of a small gritty school in the inner city of Baltimore, Maryland, and was led by 5-foot 3-point guard Muggsy Bogues. They were called the Dunbar Boys from East Baltimore's Dunbar High School. Driving through East Baltimore, amid the despair of housing projects, and the imposing dungeon like the presence of the Maryland State Penitentiary, you come across an unassuming building on the corner of Orleans and Carolyn Streets. Ball the State Prison is often a grim reminder of the pitfalls and misfortunes to be had on the rough streets of Baltimore, the building that more resembles an industrial warehouse than an institution of learning, has produced some of the greatest basketball players in the world. The 1980s were no joke. Especially in the drug-infested inner cities of America. Like New York, Philadelphia, and many other large urban cities the drug epidemic was just starting to boom. The popular show The Wire resembled the time period of Baltimore's environment perfectly. Amongst all of the wildness on the streets of Baltimore, basketball was still a large part of the culture. Specifically, street basketball. Kids of all ages came outside for hours and tested their skills on the blacktop all across the city. These are the same streets that produced today's NBA future Hall of Famers Kevin Durant and Carmelo Anthony, who had this to say about the Baltimore hoop culture. There wasn't a lot of vacancy when I was there. All these houses was filled. To see my house abandoned is... That's kind of crazy. Culture. Soon the exciting streetball competition transferred into the high schools. Muggsy and many of his friends who grew up in East Baltimore enrolled at Dunbar High School and without knowing, created history. There was no social media in the early 1980s to amplify Muggsy Bogues' true abilities, which is why the 5'3 Bogues was often mistaken for a bench player, team manager or the waterboy. But once the ball was tossed and play began, opponents of Baltimore's Dunbar High School quickly understood who Bogues was. A Fenham and the best player on what's widely considered the greatest high school team of all time. Just a year before Muggsy's arrival, Dunbar was the second best team in Baltimore. That title was held by a Catholic school called Calvert Hall. In the 1980-81 season, his team defeated Dunbar in triple overtime before a sellout crowd at the Tosin Center. Albert Hall coach Mark Amatucci calls it the best high school game ever played in Baltimore. This perspective is understandable. It was kind of like a Rocky movie, Amatucci says. The last guy standing was gonna win. While the loss was the last the poet suffered for two plus seasons, Calvert Hall, which competes in the Catholic League, fell in its season-ending tournament, held well after Dunbar's season had concluded. Amatucci believed his team was drained from the Dunbar game. We go into the summer and they ranked us number one in the preseason and Dunbar number two, he says. It wasn't until after Dunbar, with its new point guard Muggsy Bogues, traveled to New Jersey in January 1982 and defeated powerhouse Camden, that public demand for a rematch with Calvert Hall intensified. A few weeks later Dunbar got their rematch. Camden was the number one team in the nation, and we were climbing the ranks, Bogues says. The crowd had never seen a guy like myself. They started laughing and giggling, but it was something that fueled me. It got me more excited. Coach came back in the huddle and asked me if I was okay. I told him, hey coach, I'm fine. We're gonna have a party. Let's play basketball. I remember stealing the ball three times in a row, getting the game started. It was over in the blink of an eye, a cold-blooded assassination that captured the nation's attention. When the poets and buses of their followers rolled out of Camden after the 29-point win, it was clear they were returning to the city of the nation's two elite teams. Unfortunately, timing and egos conspired to prevent a rematch. If the teams were to play after Calvert Hall's final tournament, Dunbar would have been idle for nearly a month, and clearly rusty. Now with Calvert in the rear, Dunbar had no other contest. Their accomplishments seemed impossible and unattainable even as they occurred. However, the legacy of the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School boys basketball teams continued to grow after their incredible seasons. The Dunbar team of 1981-82 finished undefeated with a record of 29-0. But the 1982-1983 Poets were dominant the next season with a 31-0 campaign and a number one national ranking, being crowned the top basketball team in the nation by USA Today. They were all over local and national newspapers. This group of young men became widely known as the best high school basketball team of all time, and many of them went on to even greater basketball fame. 1982 Dunbar graduate Gary Graham played college basketball at UNLV, which was then a powerhouse. David Wingate, another 1982 grad, won an NCAA championship with Georgetown University before embarking on a productive 13-year NBA career. 
Tim Dawson, Keith James, and Mike Brown went on to star at the University of Miami, UNLV, and Syracuse University, respectively. The Dunbar team was so talented that Reggie Lewis, who became Northeastern University's fourth all-time leading scorer, a two-time conference player of the year, a first-round NBA draft pick, a NBA All-Star, and the captain of the Boston Celtics, could not even crack the Dunbar starting lineup. 1983 graduates Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, Reggie Lewis and Reggie Williams teamed with Wingate on Georgetown's 1984 national championship team. All three players were first-round picks in the 1987 NBA draft, joining David Wingate, who was a second-round pick the previous year. Enjoyed lengthy and notable NBA careers. Muggsy Bogues, being the shortest player in NBA history, had a 14-season career in the NBA. He played for Charlotte Hornets Washington Bullets, Golden State Warriors, and Toronto Raptors. Reggie Williams eventually played 10 seasons in the NBA for Los Angeles Clippers, Cleveland Cavs and San Antonio Spurs. A generation later, memories of both teams' brilliant seasons linger. Dunbar's legacy, boosted by its 5'3 basketball giant, perhaps looms a bit larger. The SPNs released a 30 for 30 documentary titled Baltimore Boys in 2017, chronicling the journey of what many consider to be the best high school basketball team to ever take the court. Now with social media, the younger generation are able to see and appreciate their legacy. something to sell tickets. After a frustrating rookie season, he was left unprotected in the expansion draft. But turning this apparent rejection into an opportunity, he would make his mark with the Charlotte Hornets. Bogues at the top, penetrates, goes in for the layup, it is good! Is he exciting? I'd pay to see him. He just disrupts everything. What a steal by Muncie Bogues! No guys running around in between your legs. <laughs> 